how large is the space and um, will there be a primary resident versus multiple units on the land and what i find is those conversations actually were pretty good because it gives me an understanding of one um, these projects are in areas that they all technically are one county but it's separated into like three or four ways and so those conversations that i had today were really good because a lot of people didn't know that some places are unincorporated and are incorporated so that means some places even though they are a part of a county that city may be its own separate independent entity and so by it being separate you have to understand how that particular um, institution works and so what i tell people it's easy to say you know i want to do a project but until you actually have a conversation with the county then you don't really know if you're able to do your project so with that being said i'll say that um, these pre-planning meetings are designed to kind of educate um, the community, meaning uh, planning and zoning, coding, and whomever else may be a part of this um, final approval process. It allows for them to kind of be able to get into that. And so what I would say is, is if you are going to start your first container project, I don't care what kind of project it is, please have a pre-planning meeting because before, before you spend money on purchasing land or you spend money paying for blueprints, especially if they have to be stamped, that's a whole nother level of expense, please make sure you had a pre-planning scenario. Ask the questions that you need to ask. Don't be afraid to ask them why it's not allowed, if they tell you it's not allowed. Um, and what I found today from I, literally seven conversations <laughs> with seven counties is that these counties, one, they don't like the way that they're normally constructed. And so they have this connotation that a container project is like a mobile home. And so what I educated them on was, one, it's not a mobile home, and it's actually a permanently a fixed product. So that gave them a little bit of ease. But there were some things that I couldn't fight against. So um, it's, for instance, the customer wanted to be in these certain areas where they wanted to build their house. And so what I had to explain to them was, is that it's not possible based off of the ordinances of the area that she actually wants to do the project in. And so what I'll say is, is that a lot of people, when it comes to doing a build out, they don't ask those questions. And so I asked, well, why is it that it's not allowed? And what I found out was that it, the ordinances have not been updated since the 1950s. Hey, Mojo. So hey, hey, you, hey. <laughs> your planning and zoning department, and they tell you the reason why your project is not allowed is because your ordinances are outdated. That's what you can't control. And so, unfortunately, for a lot of the customers, you can't. I don't know how to break that bad news, especially if they really wanted to live in a certain area. So, the best you can do, to be honest with you guys, is just have a conversation with your customer. Let them know that even though you can't do it on that specific property, maybe they can find another location. Sometimes, you know, it's the convenience of where they work at or the convenience of where, you know, they kind of have to do their daily things. 